So I was looking at what experts say and um, basically internet advice too about um, how to tell your bait that you want to swing. And this is uh, Swinger's Guide um, and DGM Insights at gmail.com. If you want to respond to this video, I, uh, I'm going to do it in sections and steps. And step one is this one, and it's uh, self reflection. Um, once you know that you are thinking about becoming in the swinging lifestyle swing couple, you need to talk to your mate. Now, that's why it's consensual non monogamy. Uh, you're not trying to hide it. There are many people who do hide it. and um, that causes certain uh, problems too. But this video is about what you want to do if you want to um, actually talk to your mate about becoming a swinger. And there are steps, and I'm going to go through the steps. Uh, you're going to find them in different orders on the internet, um, and some of them are kind of uh, quirky. This is going to be in more uh, detail, a little more experience to it than uh, just what a book says. So um, the first thing you need to do is so, uh, self-reflection. You need to sit down, calm down. Now, women and men both ask uh, to be in the swinging lifestyle. So, so when you're thinking about it, it's both women and men in this uh, video. <clears throat> Step one is self-reflection. Uh, to think about your past, think about your own morals, think about if you can be in a non-standard relationship, uh, whether you can handle the jealousy, because if you do it, uh, your spouse will do it, um, and you need to know that you can emotionally go there. It is a step forward in maturity. And a lot of monogamous people will disagree with that, but it is. It takes more emotional maturity. It's kind of a step forward as a human species person, too, because you have to really deal with some emotions from the past, memories of the past, and um, that's something that you need to do in self-reflection. So the first one is self-reflection for you, and you have to ask yourself, are you mature enough to do it? What is your expectations, your personal expectations? That's another thing you need to think about in your uh, self-reflection. Maybe write a list. Don't keep a list where your spouse can find it or she might get confused by the whole thing. So maybe make a list in your head or make a list somewhere private about the advantages and the disadvantages. To try and think of all the disadvantages of being in the swinging lifestyle for you personally. Think about how you were raised, how your religious beliefs, and um, whether it's worth it or not for you uh, to be in the swinging lifestyle. So that would be step one. So I was looking at what experts say and um, basically internet advice too about um, how to tell your mate that you want to swing. And this is uh, Swinger's Guide um, and DGM Insights at gmail.com. If you want to respond to this video, I, uh, I'm going to do it in sections and steps. And step one is this one, and it's uh, self reflection. Um, once you know that you are thinking about becoming in the swinging lifestyle swing couple, you need to talk to your mate. Now, that's why it's consensual non-monogamy. Uh, you're not trying to hide it. There are many people who do hide it, and um, that causes certain uh, problems too. But this video is about what you want to do if you want to um, actually talk to your mate about becoming a swinger. And there are steps, and I'm going to go through the steps. Uh, you're going to find them in different orders on the internet, um, and some of them are kind of uh, quirky. This is going to be in more uh, detail, a little more experience to it than uh, just what a book says. So um, the first thing you need to do is so, uh, self-reflection. You need to sit down, calm down. Now, women and men both ask uh, to be in the swinging lifestyle. So, so when you're thinking about it, it's both women and men in this uh, video. <clears throat> Step one is self-reflection. Uh, to think about your past, think about your own morals, think about if you can be in a non-standard relationship, uh, whether you can handle the jealousy, because if you do it, uh, your spouse will do it, um, and you need to know that you can emotionally go there. It is a step forward in maturity, and <clears throat> a lot of monogamous people will disagree with that, but it is. It takes more emotional maturity. It's kind of a step forward as a human species person, too, because you have to really deal with some emotions from the past, memories of the past, and um, that's something that you need to do in self-reflection. So the first one is self-reflection for you, and you have to ask yourself, are you mature enough to do it? What is your expectations, your personal expectations? That's another thing you need to think about in your uh, self-reflection. Maybe write a list. Don't keep a list where your spouse can find it or she might get confused by the whole thing. 
So maybe make a list in your head or make a list somewhere private about the advantages and the disadvantages to try and think of all the disadvantages of being in the swinging lifestyle for you personally. Think about how you were raised, how your religious beliefs, and um, whether it's worth it or not for you uh, to be in the swinging lifestyle. So that would be step one. So this is Swingers Guide DGM Insights. If you want to respond to us, it's dgminsights at gmail.com. Um, so this is step two, uh, how to tell your spouse that you want to be in the swinging lifestyle. And it's both men and women, so this applies to both. Um, so the next step, this is step two, and it's research and education, um, becoming uh, educated in what the lifestyle actually is, the varying forms of it, um, and the varying uh, catches to it, uh, what jealousy comes from. There's a lot of uh, psychology articles out there for you to examine for yourself and now start making a list for your spouse in your head about what would help her. So research on it for you personally, whoever, whoever it may, whichever gender it may be, it would be important that you um, you figure it out for both of you. Uh, research it uh, with two things in mind. One, you're going to research it with somebody who has a preconceived idea. They're already biased. I was watching a video that was ridiculous. The guy was smooth talking, older guy, expert in relationships, but he was a minister and his advice was really... Um, was really skewed by his point of view and his history. So um, you need to really think about who, who is saying this and who is researching it and what do the numbers say? What, and for example, a, a lot of polls say that uh, Sweden couples are actually happier in their marriage, but it's what they have to go through to get there. So you have to kind of question uh, the research. There are some humorous ways to look at research, but it's actually who's putting them on as to what answer you will get. There are some people that don't agree with the swinging lifestyle, but in fact, um, uh, don't uh, just degrade it. They know that it's something that's coming up in society. It's actually getting more and more popular. I saw one poll said it went from 8 to 14%. So I don't know if it's that high, maybe 12%, but the poll was interesting um, for couples to look at. So do the research and find out the pitfalls, find out the emotional pitfalls, find out the history. And then that brings you to um, an another idea is uh, and it's step two B, I guess. So in this step, you would also look at your expectations and the expectations of maybe your spouse. But what are your expectations of the lifestyle? Is it really what you're going to find? Um, and so why are you doing it in your relationship? Why Why about your relationship? Um, majority of swingers, they just um, they say, well, it's not that to replace my marital sex. It's or or it's to find something fun and exciting to do, like a hobby. A hobby is a very healthy idea. Um, there are some other emotional negative ideas for swinging. A uh, hobby is emotionally normal, and just for the excitement of it, it's emotionally normal uh, and healthy. Um, but there are some negative ones. You need to research those, and I'll do videos about them. I have some older videos. I'll do new ones about them. But that's step two. So we're at step two, Swinger's Guide. Uh, insights, give me a Swinger's Guide at Insights. That's going to be dgminsights at gmail.com. And uh, this is step two. Thank you. Okay, so this is dgminsights at gmail.com. It's swingers guide number three um, about how to tell your spouse you want to be a swinging or be a swinging couple. Um, it be an ethical non-monogamy. So the ethical part is actually communicating about it. So the number three, step number three is open communication. One of the greatest advantages to the lifestyle from swinging couples' point of view is the open communication. They find humorous things about it um, that they can tell each other that no other spouses tell each other. Um, so communication is one of them. You have to look at how your communication is doing. I recommend that most couples, uh, whenever you can, is to have a short period of time where you go for a walk or you exercise or you just sit and talk. Um, if you don't have that in your relationship, it will improve your relationship uh, a lot if you don't just go to separate rooms or keep your phone on you and just like, you know. So um, that's something to think about. Uh, how is your communication doing? Do you have really good communication? Do you have unbiased communication? Do you have uh, communication that isn't, um, isn't uh, controlled by the other person? Is it controlled by you? Um, is it open? Can you say anything to your spouse? If you can say answer no, and you can't say anything to your spouse, it's a real warning flag here, a real warning sign that maybe you should be careful about telling your spouse you want to swing. Um, I would work on communication. And again, like I've said in every conversation with, with swinging couples that we've had, and there's a lot of them, uh, they put communication as number one. It, it improves the communication, but it also gives you an openness 
that isn't, you know, there's a concept called lying by omission. That's when you don't say something. So you walk by a beautiful girl, it doesn't matter what gender you are, you walk by a beautiful girl or a handsome guy, and you, you cannot say to your spouse, wow, that, that's nice, I would like to do something with that. If that's not the kind of communication, you might just um, take it as a warning sign that you have to work on that too. Thank you, this is step three, and again, it's uh, dgminsights at gmail.com, and this is Swinger's Guide. Um, step three, open communication. This is step four, and it's seek professional guide, uh, guidance, um, but understand the professional that you're seeking. Uh, couples counselors look at the model of human behavior, and in that model, um, infidelity is a negative thing in the model, and monogamy is a positive thing even though it's not working. Think about the 80-some percent of people that get divorces in this uh, country, you know, and a good percentage are for the for infidelity. So think about whether those models are working. You know, I do a video where I said that, the, and I proved it with facts, that the marriage contract with monogamy is the most failed institution in the United States. It's the most uh, failed contract. On the other hand, uh, when it doesn't include non-monogamy, it's uh, successful because people who have gotten divorced for infidelity uh, remarry at a high rate, like 80% or something. So uh, the logic is there to watch who, um, and what guidance you get. If you get it online, just be careful that the advice comes from where it comes from. Uh, so couples, counselors, a lot of them don't have any clue about swinging. Um, I hate to say it, but they revert to those models of human behavior that are supposed to be positive, and in fact, they are, they're not working. So they should really, if you're a counselor, if you're a couples counselor and you're watching this, my good advice is learn more about the lifestyle, the goods and the bads, and there are both. The negatives and the positives, there are both. But um, sometimes the positive can save a marriage, and you should look at that. And those who do swing say that they're happier after they started uh, the, the swinging lifestyle. So you might want to find out why. Um, they find it more exciting, and they, they last longer. They're married longer if they're happier. Um, so then you need to look at also uh, religious counselors. Religious counselors are bizarrely... Uh, um, a lot of them have a bizarre sense of the past. If they say that the Bible encourages monogamy, it does. But um, Jesus and all the uh, and all the past were that whole culture was polyamory. It was poly uh, um, uh, were polygamous, and they were also uh, not moral from the Christian point of view. They were not monogamous. That happened uh, centuries later. They started changing reality, and that's something you should probably look at. Um, if you're gonna have an argument or a conversation with a, a religious person is, a minister or whatever, is what is reality, divorce rates are high, uh, non-monogamy works better for a lot of couples, and the Bible actually has a history in non-monogamy. There are people in the Bible that uh, consulted prostitutes and, and all this stuff, it's like, and they're supposed to be the good guy. So um, so that's something is you need to watch. Also think about where your spouse is gonna go for this advice. Um, the other thing is your close friends. Now there, there's a catch there. Is the first two have a, a obligation to be a confidential, where a friend may not. And you have a male friend or a female friend, and they tell their spouse, and their spouse tells your spouse, and so that's not you know, by rumor and by um, you know by that uh, gossip chain is not really the most healthy place to find uh, to have um, communication about whether you should be a swinger or not, or how to tell your spouse. So that's something to think about too. Okay, so this is a Couples Guide, and this is dgminsights at gmail.com. And so um, the fifth step, this is step five, and it's set boundaries. Um, there is a um, boundaries, and a lot of uh, new swingers, newbies is what they call them, a lot of them have like rules, a lot of rules. Very rarely will people who have done it for years they care about the rules. They just sort of open up their swing to things they want to do and their spouse wants to do, and that's sort of normal. But it's very, uh, very... Um, good for you to analyze what rules you would want uh, before you talk to your spouse. Um, some are no kissing, which is really great. Uh, couples, that's kind of a, a kind of a newbie thing. Um, no kissing comes from a movie by Julia Roberts, and it's really kind of a fake thing. There's a lot of really personal and uh, private things you do with in swinging couples, um, and that um, uh, kissing is not the most personal thing you do. So um, that might be a bad example, but um, you might want to look at those and then look at the logic of those rules and uh, 
think so in a road so you have a rule that says you go this way and if you're on this lane you go that way and you know you don't um, speed for the most part because those speed limits are to keep the children safe and to keep you safe uh, on various road conditions even when they don't make sense those are just like traffic rules and and you know, put your blinker on and tell people where you're going so th those are just r basic rules and you need to come up with basic rules set boundaries um, set, set with what you're comfortable with and then when you talk to your spouse you can um, you can think about that and talk to him about that. And that'll help her make her feel more comfortable or him more comfortable too. Um, if, you know, many newbies, they say no one-on-ones, which one-on-ones are like you go off and you're doing it by yourself. Um, sometimes that makes them feel very much secure if they're at the party too. And so that's something that you can go through the list and figure out what's appropriate for you and your spouse. So then you're at step six, and step six would be um, set up the scene. Um, maybe say certain comments in advance to see if they'll talk about non-monogamy in your relationship. See if they'll talk about it in other relationships. Um, see if there's a feeler there where you can find out how they'd feel. You know, if you're sitting at a movie and there's like a person who's married to one person and, and they start doing a swinging behavior, um, and find out how they feel about it. They say, oh gosh, I'd never do that. Then maybe you should be really careful about continuing. So that's uh, step six. And step six is another realization thing. It's something where you sit back and you say, I don't want to do any harm to my to my spouse. Now that should be your main uh, thrust. There are many people who just don't want to continue married if they're not going to be, if they're going to be monogamous or not be in an ethical non-monogamy. And that's your choice and it's something for you to set your own boundaries on. But um, number six would be um, just look and be pay attention to the other person and talk to them you know, without actually bringing it up. So that leads us to number seven. So this is um, Swinger's Guide and this is um, how to tell your spouse you want to um, be in the swinging lifestyle. Now this is number seven. Um, number seven is basically set the scene, have a relaxed moment, don't do it while you're stressed or you know, there's unemployment in the family or whatever, you know, don't do it when there's stress around. Do it when maybe a glass of wine, a cup of tea. I don't suggest you over drink because then the liquor gets blamed, but sometimes that happens too. You talk openly when you've had some liquor in you, but um, just look for harsh reactions, look for um, anything other than, yeah, that's kind of a cool idea, or I wouldn't do that, but okay, and you know, those kind of things. So you need to really pay attention to what's being said in the seventh, which is you tell them. Now there are various different ways to tell them, hey, you know what, what did you think about this? There's the blunt, bold way, hey, what do you think about this? Or there's the, hey, I heard about, you know, I have this, I know this person who, you know, they do this behind the scene, what do you think about that? And then there's, um, hey, you let's set it up, let's do it, kind of a, you know, I don't, you have to kind of pick your approach, and the approach is yours to do. And it is, um, by both genders, it's the most risky to your relationship if the other person is staunchly monogamous, and that's really an important thing in their marriage. Um, and you can bring up stories of other swingers and bring up statistics that you've already researched and, and think about that and talk about the risks and the advantages to being in an open, ethical non-monogamy or a lifestyle. But do remember that the risks, because the risks are, are both genders, and both uh, about half, a little under half, say that they would leave their spouse if they wanted to be in a non-monogamous uh, lifestyle. So you might say something like, you know, I would never do it, but what do you think about this? And then if they react favorably, you know, so their approach is yours. I'm saying this seventh is the last step in, in this idea. And then you implement the things you've learned about boundaries and about um, research and about uh, maybe getting uh, counseling, depending on who you choose. So this is number seven. Okay, so this is Swinger's Guide, um, how to tell your spouse that you uh, want to be in the swinging lifestyle. This is both genders do it, and so we need to look at both genders. But this is um, number eight, step eight. This is post communication. This is after you talk about it. Um, remember to give your spouse plenty of time to reason through it and think about it. You've had time. If you've followed these steps, um, you've had enough time to, to assimilate it and think about it and, and want to do it. Um, don't bring it up if you don't want to do it. They really want to do it um, because it would just cause um, undue stress to the other person. Um, I give plenty of time for responses and questions and talk about it and say you've researched it and you want to talk about it uh, afterwards. Don't uh, just drop the subject. Now, some people with a little liquor in them, uh, they let it sit for a while and they say, hey, do you remember when we talked about this? 
um, so bring it up later too and see how they react uh, maybe when they're more sober or have uh, you know one glass of wine or whatever but um, so the post thoughts is then you also have to think about um, you know how is this affecting my spouse really emotionally you know if the person is crying about it or the person tells her friends about how horrible it is or tell his friends how horrible that her husband or wife is then you might want to think about um, recanting it and or um, coming into your decisions now your belief systems and your decisions are your own so even those are these are trying to be helpful hints there are some references if you email me that I can send you but um, it's DGM insights at gmail.com but the post is just be careful you know at your family um, and it's your it, it'll improve your relationship it'll improve your maturity and your spouse's maturity if you let it um, if you don't let it and it becomes an issue then um, that can cause harm and so you don't want to do harm to your family so there's my spiel about just be very careful and be very attentive to the signs too and be ready to reverse out of it if that's what your lifestyle is going to be okay thank you and i hope you have a great day bye-bye thank you for watching too